So here is one of my favorite pictures of Giza that I happened to take when it was a very cloudy and dramatic stormy day and yet the sun was piercing through the clouds and illuminating the second pyramid of Khafre. There's a lot of drama at this site and I'd like to introduce you to some of it. So what better way to get comfortable with Giza than to take a quick walking tour around the place. Now you know the layout of the Nile and the sites of Egypt, and Giza, of course, is towards the north. It's just to the west of modern Cairo, and a large suburb actually known as Giza. And I love these then and now comparison photographs. You see three of them here. At the top, the excavations are just beginning in the early 1900s. We're on the west side of Khufu's Great Pyramid, and you can see the sand is covering just about everything. In the middle shot, we've made tremendous progress and look at all of the individual tombs of Egypt's elite of the Old Kingdom that are turning up. And then down below, the last one in color shows a present day appearance. And again, you can see how much has been cleared. There is an amazing amount of earth that has been removed at Giza between 1900 and the present. So this overview shot gives you some white lines that will show you the path that we'll be following. And we'll just make some brief stops along the way, and I'll try to point out some of the highlights. In additional modules, we'll go into much more detail about the royal pyramid complexes themselves, about the mastaba tomb fields of the elites. These are the governing classes of Egypt's old kingdom. Think about 2500 BC or so. And we'll look at the Sphinx, and we'll wander, and eventually end up almost back where we started. Now, along the way, you have to remember that the pyramids as you see them today do not look the way they did in antiquity. There were beautiful, fine, white limestone casing blocks on the exteriors of these monuments, giving them a flat, smooth, gleaming appearance that would have been visible for miles. These were the first billboards of the world, and they really would have sent a message loud and clear for everyone to see. This is a computer model reconstruction of the Great Pyramid Complex, as it probably looked upon completion. So we've walked up the hill past the Great Pyramid, and now we're looking southwards at the Eastern Cemetery on the east side of the Great Pyramid. You can see these large twin mastaba tombs. Those are the rectangular superstructures. And they were originally much smaller, but they were joined together to form twin or great mastabas. They're much longer than the tombs on the other side of the Great Pyramid. And towards the left-hand side of the photo, you'll see a gigantic one that dwarfs all the others. That belongs to Ankaf, a very famous person who we'll meet in later modules. The three rather stumpy small pyramids that are in the right side of the photograph are queen's pyramids meant for Khufu's queens. Down in the lower right, that very dark patch that you see is the basalt flooring. That's a hard, dark stone that was the floor, just about all that's left, of Khufu's pyramid temple abutting the east side of his pyramid. And then in two perpendicular arrangements, you see two of the five boat pits that also accompany the pyramid complex. Off in the distance at the top of the photograph is a nice profile view of the Sphinx. Let's head down that way next. So here is the Sphinx, built by Khafre, most likely, although the debate rages on and some people feel it belongs to Khufu, others even Jedefre, who doesn't even have a pyramid at Giza. But Khafre makes the most sense for archaeological, art historical, and technical reasons. In front of the Sphinx is the Sphinx Temple, never completely finished. And then just off to the left in the distance is the larger and better preserved Khafre Valley Temple with magnificent, huge stone pillars made of granite that had to be hauled from the quarries at Aswan, hundreds of miles south of Giza, and towed on barges up to the site. A little bit off and out of the picture we'll visit later are additional buildings that come from much later periods, such as the New Kingdom. So there were pharaohs that were visiting this site long after the Sphinx and the pyramids were antiquities. That adds to the richness of the story, and we'll meet some of those characters later. Now we're behind the Sphinx and we're looking westwards. So just a little corner of Khafre's second pyramid is at the right, and in the center in the distance is the third and smallest pyramid of Menkaure, along with three queen's pyramids. But what you see in the foreground is really quite fascinating. This is the quarry zone. This is where the interior core blocks for Khufu's Great Pyramid were quarried. And the reason I've drawn all those red lines on the tops of the buildings is to show you that that was the original surface level. 
So for a minute, imagine none of the buildings in this scene and imagine this quarry area with all of the core blocks being cut and hauled away. And then after the pyramid was completed and this ceased being a quarry, it became another Giza cemetery. We call it the central field today. So those red lines indicates the tops of the original surface and many of the tombs were then built up as mastaba structures. Others were cut into the rock surfaces and still others were converted from the outcrops of limestone that were left over after the quarrying process was complete. As you can imagine, it's a tremendous amount of stone that was quarried to build that pyramid. This photograph is a rare nighttime view taken from the top of the Great Pyramid, and we're looking westwards. Off in the distance, you can see the lights of uh, Cairo and Giza and looking uh, off to the west. We see the second pyramid of Khafre with its recognizable white limestone casing blocks still preserved at the top, giving it a sort of white hat that makes it clearly distinguishable from the Great Pyramid itself. And then to the right are the orderly rows of mastaba tombs of the so-called Western Cemetery. Here's another view in daylight, and now you can see just how magnificent Khufu's original plan was. He laid out these buildings in an orderly fashion. The original oldest ones were all the same size. They were set in these orderly streets and rows, and that was going to be the final layout of Giza. Later on, after Khufu's reign, many other Egyptians added their tombs to the area, and the pattern got a little bit uh, confused and you have lower class elites also adding shafts and structures in the streets in between the major tombs that Khufu originally laid out. And so things get quite confusing. All of these cemeteries have their own numbering systems given to them largely by the Harvard University Boston Museum of Fine Arts Expedition. And we still use those numbers today. Finally, we come to the third and smallest pyramid of King Menkau Re. Here we see it from the air with the area in shadow at the lower right, that's the north face, and that's where the entrance is. The entrance is always on the north side for these pyramids. And then we have a good aerial view of the Menkau Re Pyramid Temple abutting the east side. This was excavated in 1906 and 1907 and produced a colossal statue in travertine, alabaster, or calcite of Menkau Re himself, found in several different pieces in different parts of the temple. At the top of the photograph are three queen's pyramids, some of them unfinished. And then running down to the left, you can see the beginnings of the causeway that runs eastwards and connects to Menkau Re's valley temple.